The future in sound and geometry is to be able to see the shapes of sound. Shape and sound relate to frequency vibration. All my life I thought I was going to become a doctor and then I just decided to, I renunciated everything at the age of 18, I just decided to give everything I owned away. I went and lived with Aboriginal people for two years and I didn't see white people for two years. Something got transmitted to me beyond the spoken word by living with them and for the first time living in cycles with the ocean and floods. And that's where I believe I first learnt sacred geometry. The first book I wrote is called The True Value of Pi equals 3.144. So we know that pi has another value, but it's never been released. The mathematics of curvature is in error by that little fraction, but that's enough to create distortion. So anything to do with circle and engineering is based on pi. So all mathematics of satellites, mobile phones, it's all based on understanding pi. If pi is wrong, then everything we know in our history for two and a half thousand years is incorrect. The reason why I'm teaching all of this is that the next generation children are going to grow up with this acute awareness that sacred geometry is a universal language and that we need to correct the true value of pi. But something happened a hundred years ago. Someone decided to take out all the beautiful stuff that made mathematics a sacred science. Mm -hmm. And I found out that the people who wrote the curriculum are fundamental Christians in Brisbane. Anything that's not Christian is deleted. So all I'm trying to do is create an opportunity for the next generation of kids to come in and learn meaningful, beautiful visual mathematics. Rudolf Steiner 60 years ago had a, a vision of a spiritual education and we nurture the soul and we get them to draw spirals and, you know, and all this beautiful stuff. Well, this is the kind of maths that we want. I know my mission. My mission is I'm here to introduce a new curriculum. That, that's Jane. Oh, who's Jane? Oh, Jane, Jane's got this thing about turning numbers into pictures. I believe that your child really needs to learn what we call Vedic mathematics. So 3,000 years ago, the yogis were sitting down and you could ask them any complex mathematical question and they just used their feminine right brain to see the answer by understanding shape, pattern recognition, and they invented the zero and the decimal point. 3,000 years ago, these remote yogis on the hilltop created a highly intelligent language of numbers. When a child learns these basic 16 formulas, it literally switches them on. By teaching children visual content like sacred geometry, it creates what I call whole brain learning. Shape is the future language, is a universal language. And that's why we have to teach children visual content. So that's my job is to take the esoteric information, all the research I do, and transduce it down, bring it right down to the level of a 13-year-old so that they can say, oh, wow, it's beautiful. In India, there's one billion people that as soon as they hear the word 108, they put their hands together and no one had ever explained the mathematical origin of why 108. Right. So I was the first person in the world I connected 108 to the living mathematics of nature, saying that the mathematics in our cells, in pine cones, and the distances of the planets from the sun is encoded or encoded in the numerical vibration of 108. And that suddenly made them feel oh, that we have a tangible connection now to 108, which is life, which is flowers. And I received an email and um, they wrote my name is Jane 108. I was just Jane. Well, it's a good so name, I, so stick with it. I think it's a great yeah, name. Thank, <laughs> yeah, thank you. And I needed to explain that I didn't make that up. It just actually happened.